Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, this session we will be talking occupational safety, occupational health and safety management system. What is occupational health safety management system means and also we will talk about Occupational Health Safety Assessment Series 18001. How it is used to develop Occupational Health and Safety Management System. Please understand, OHSAS is different to OSHA. Some people get confused. OSHA is Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It is OSHA is a body in United States which controls the OHS across the country. It is under the Labor Ministry of US. What we are talking is OHSAS, Occupational Health Safety Assessment Series 18001 is nothing related to OSHA. It is to the whole of the world. Okay. What do you understand by safety management? It's very simple. In the previous lectures, the speakers have been talking about the safety management. What is that? In any activity, any processes, any activity which you do, there are hazards in that. Suppose, the technology, as I said, technology, processes, they bring hazards. Example, if you want to see when we, when the humanity, when the electricity has been discovered, the whole of humanity was very happy, jubilant. Electricity city, which is the, which has come in the second industrial revolution, has changed the whole world, the pace, the speed, the productivity, production, everything, everything is changed. But it also brought hazards with that. What is the hazard? Electric electricity itself is not the hazard. Current is not the hazard. Current is flowing many times. But the voltage is the hazard. If it is very low voltage, hazard is very less. If it is high voltage, hazard is very high. When you want technology, 90 percent of the times the hazards follow. Those hazards will get opened out if you do not manage it, if you do not take care of it, then it will be con converted into injury. the hazards not to open, we put risk control systems, various risk control systems. Risk control systems of uh, uh, very engineering nature, which, which will be fail safe. That means even it fails, nothing will happen. 
like vacuum brakes in the railways or uh, the brakes in the heavy vehicles, fail safe brakes, even if they fail nothing will happen. They are all the interventions. So, the hazard not to open, we put the interventions. In the last classes, Professor Maithi talked about the various elements of the hazards, hazard initiate, hazard elements, hazards initiating mechanisms and target. These three combined is called hazard. So, hazard elements you have to understand and you have to understand what are the initiating mechanisms and you have to put risk control barrier here or risk control barrier you can keep here itself at the hazard element level or if you feel by any chance hazard happens, incident happens to reduce the consequence you put here risk control measures. So, understanding the hazard, hazard elements, initiating mechanisms and the targets, putting the risk control systems so that it will be resulted into, it will not be resulted into incident. This whole thing is called the safety management system. How will you do it? How will you design it? How will you execute it? How will you maintain it? That is called occupational health and safety management system. People talk differently about these things. In 1930s, a, an engineer called Henrich, who was working in the insurance companies, he, he, he had seen all the claims, why pe how people are claiming the insurances. So, he under understood what is the injuries happened. So, after working for some time, he started analyzing the injuries. Then he has got injuries of its own will, ha will not happen. It will be followed by many incidents. He called it domino theory, dominoes, you play dominoes. So, if all these things should be present for dominoes to happen, if you remove any, any of these things, then the, the, the domino cycle will not be completed. So, he said you start removing something. What he told is for a serious incident to happen, it will not happen of its own. Before that, there are 30 lost time injuries or 300 little severe incidents or 3000 near misses, though it, it has not damaged anybody, injured anybody, damaged any property, but it happened. It has got potential to damage. So, he said before this happens, all these things will happen as in the domino theory. Then people have improved it and they said, no, 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 you go little step less. You understand, you one near miss to happen, there are 30,000 hazards or gaps in thinking, all these things are developed by people. Finally, this is people are talking about the fatality, people's behavior and all these things comes in under this. When this happened, 1931, no hazardous processes, no hazardous operations, no hazardous machines, very, very low hazardous machines, mostly people, 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 people. So, this is okay at that time. But still people hang on this. People do not question the hazard triangle. Maybe where the people are working more, more and more people oriented, this may be useful. Let us talk about the other scenario. You put the machines, even to carry the people in the underground mines, you get the, you use the technology. For everything you use the technology. So, 
I will put more technology into. That is, people say that is, I have, I have put the engineering interventions everywhere. Though you have reduced it, the technology also brought hazards. So, people who brought the technology, there also incidents are happening. People who he was following the behavioral safety, there also incidents were happening. The whole uh, industries were fuzzled. To understand this, let me tell you the safety and health philosophy in any organization. In any organization, wherever people are working, How does it look? You have a boundary, you have got the plant boundary, then you get the material, raw materials depending upon the processes which you make, output which you look. Suppose if it is a steel plant where hot, hot rolled coils are required, you get the material where it will go into various things, blast furnaces, steel melting rock, finally it is get rolled and output coils you will get. That is the processes and other on the other side you get the people, people work on this, on these technologies, on these processes and they come out. What do you require? The people who have come, they should come out happily. The processes which you make, they should bring the qualitative production, quantity, quality, then it is a sustainable organization. It is very safe. People are safe, machines are safe, not damaged, production is coming out. This is the safety and health philosophy. Health means any hazardous gases, ergonomics which will damage people is also taken care, should be taken care. This is called the philosophy of health and safety. This is what is to be achieved. Who are the stakeholders? Workers, machines, material, processes, society, national priorities. How national priorities? Suppose if you say I want to make totally autom uh, automation probably it is not acceptable for the nation. You have to create employment. That is the national priorities. Employment is also required. Companies vision. Companies will have different vision. Along with this, if you go to Tata's, Tata Steel, they say not a blood of, not a drop of blood should be seen on the shop floor. No injury is allowed. Safety is my priority. Welfare of the people is my priority. We do not want anybody to get injured when people get into our plants. At whatever cost, you have to see that people will come inside, work and go without damaging their any parts. Same as Reliance. They say the priority is, I have been to one of the Reliance uh, projects, no injury, things should come in time, schedule. All progressive industries, they say people should not get injured. This is the safety philosophy of any progressive industries across the world. How to achieve it? <clears throat> there are 7600 people are dying every day, about 2.7 million people are dying while working in the industries. We see some We see some direct costs. Direct costs, if it is 1 pound, the indirect costs are 8 to 36 times 
because of the various things like legal costs, investigation time, reputation, reputation costs, moral, lowering, lowered moral, all these things you consider because of any incident that will be very, very high. It is about 8 to 36 times depending upon the countries, depending upon the regulations, depending upon the priorities. National Safety Council says in 2011 this many cost of death will be this much comprehensive cost, various figures they have given. <clears throat> so, what are the objectives of the occupational health and safety management system? Number one, there should be continuous improvement in the OHS performance. It should not be stagnant. From today to tomorrow, there should be continual improvement. All the legal requirements, countries, different countries have put different legal requirements to protect people and properties. There they should be met. And the objectives, the leadership, what is the leadership looking for? No injuries, no hazards. What, what are the objectives you have put? Those objectives should be achieved. Everybody wants to do it. They design their own OHS management system. They feel they have designed very well. But when they come to some legal requirements, they miss. But some incidents keep happening. Very, very serious incidents happen. They feel, then they feel, oh, I have missed it. So people ad hocly, with their own knowledge, people are developing occupational health safety management systems. They are passionate, proactive, professional, progressive leaders are there. Still, because of the lack of understanding, because of the lack of clarity, people are designing a OHS management system which is not able to address objectives, address legal requirements. That is a big issue. <clears throat> How is it to be sorted out? People feel, what is that I have to write in the, what is that we have to address in the OHS management system? If you want to buy a motor, you have a specification, then you will get as per your specification. If you want to buy a TV, you have a specification. If you want to buy a shirt, let me tell you, in one of the in one of the industries, in one of the in industries where you have twenty five thousand people, this is a case of two thousand two thousand year. They all should be provided with, with the dresses to take care of the uh, environmental requirements. The tailors used to come, take the dimensions, stitch the cloths, give to the people. And people used to say it has become tight, it has become loose, it is a huge problem as a whole. They are correcting, for correcting the things, tailors used to sit in the organization in the year 2000. When somebody said, let us have brainstorming, we called some 100 people. We have asked, how many of you buy direct stitched cloths and wear? About 95 percent of 95 people are said, yes, we are buying and using. So, 95 percentile people are buying 
how do you buy people say i my size is 42 my size is 44 my size is 40 when the dresses which we use for all purposes we are buying why are we stitching here then we are then the organization has put different sizes 38 40 42 44 sizes of the shirts similarly pants and they have asked people to select they have selected and accordingly the orders used to be made and the problem is solved specification specification will take out many problems so osha 18001 is the specification for ohs it tells how ohs management system should be it is the specification please understand it's not the management it is developed in 1999 as a specification if you are involved in specification and standards first people make the specification they do lot of trials they run it and they see if everything is okay then they will convert into convert into standard so osha 18001 1999 was a specification and it is converted into standard standard is also a specification but standard specification a huge maturity as achieved you can keep following up so osha 2018001 2007 is a standard many people confuse the osha's 18001 as ohs management standard occupational health and safety management standard is different this is specification for developing the occupational health and safety management the osha 18001 specification is developed on pdca plan develop implement and check principle if you anything if you follow on pdca it will have continuous improvement so osha 18001 specification He is developed so that occupational health and safety managements could be developed under PDCA management. If you have certification, OSHA certification, OSHA 18001, 2007 certification means you have knowledge about the requirements. You have understood how to control your hazards. Understood. implementation you have to do how you have to implement ohs management will will take care of the total implementation but because of the specification you have got the knowledge is what are the market drivers for developing osha 18001 so international customer demand see stand alone management system we want stand alone management system for the occupational health and safety which could be which could be integrated with iso 14001 iso 19 9001 because people do not want to have many management systems management system basically follow the same thing we should be able to integrate everything and have one integrated management system it will the raise of safety costs health costs in terms of in terms of insurance compensation direct indirect it's increasing day by day and regulations are becoming more and more rigid to protect people so it will also reduce the increasing investigation time wages training if you if somebody is injured if you want to replace it is becoming very difficult in the competitive world to give training that much training so extra supervisors you have to put so loss of business and goodwill if an incident happens stock values will come down 
major incident happens, stock values will come down. All these things are the drivers for looking for OSHA's 18001 specification. How is it developed? In 1999, a group is formed with a consortium of 43 organizations of 28 countries. This consortium includes national standard bodies, registrars, OHNC institutes, consultants, and the practitioners from the industries. All those things, 43 organizations, they join together. Though there is some reluctance from the international organization, our American Institute, but this is for, this is made. It is British Health Safety. They have taken the lead. In 1996, the BS 18 8800 is launched, which is similar to OSHA's 18001. In 1999, this OSHA's 18000 specification is developed. And 2007, the 18001 specification has been made standard. Please understand, before making standard, lot of trials, lot of experiments, lot of implementations have been done. When people get satisfied, that specification is converted into standard. So, OSHA's 18001 is the specification for OHS management system. There is OSHA's 18002 also, which will give some guidance, guidelines. OSHA's 18003 talks about the criteria for auditors. But main is OSHA's 18001. So, what are the benefits from this? You have reduction of incidents because it is developed by the huge experienced people, reduction of downtimes, legal requirements, compliance, demonstration and commitment. The leadership can demonstrate their commitment towards safety. The people, employers, employees will be very, very happy. You will have new customers. The organizations where the, in, where the incidents are less, Customers would go there and buy the things. So better management risk. So public liability, if anything happens, gases go to environment, liability is more, all those things will not happen. So insurance costs will come down. OSHA's 18001, please understand, it is also based on the fundamental fundamental uh, definition we have given to OHS management. That is, OSHA's 18001 is also based on the hazard identification, risk assessment, putting the controls, so that this hazard will not become a injury as incident. So, OSHA's 18001 is also based, the specification is based on the same principles of anybody talks about, hazard, risk and interventions. The safety management, safety is nothing but hazard, risk and interventions. If you understand this and you implement this and if you monitor this, that means occupational health safety management is fulfilled. So, this has got six, six sections. Any management system will have the follow these sections only. We will have requirements, it will have policy, objectives, so planning, implementation and checking and management review. Okay. In these things, you can add many things. Now in the management review, people develop huge data, big data, people call big data and they, to, they do Analytics, data analytics. 
and they get the predictions. That is part of management review. Right, right now, management review, the data collection and review analysis is very, very high. Data analytics has come into picture. So, VOSHAS 18001 is based on the plan, do, check and act, PDU, PD. So, the management system which have used these principles of PDCA using 18001, in the plan stage, they devised the OHS policy. They divide the policy. They plan hazard identification and risk assessment. In one of the very progressive industry, the risk assessment hazard identification is done at three stages. One is HERA hazard identification and risk assessment by workers. Then officers and supervisors, they do the observations. Then finally, the hazardous processes, the engineers, knowledgeable engineers, using process hazard analysis or process management techniques, they find out. So, all these things will be incorporated in the planning stage of the uh, OSHAS 18, uh, based the OHS management based on OSHAS 18001. Relevant legal requirements, plan agent, planning agent, plan emergencies, manage change effectively. What is managing change effectively. When people change, you should bring the uh, trained people properly. If the equipment, there is any change, you should see how the change is conveyed to the people, so that no wrong thing will happen. Do, how do you implement? People normally will have a implementation strategy account you see one of the one of the industries they have some 17 principles for implementation those 17 principles are based on the fundamental principles of the organization fundamental principles of the that company which is driven by effort time and money of the people Involving all the people and commitment, involving all the people, they implement this. So, based on the fundamental principles, putting effort, time and money, involving people, they drive all these principles, 17 principles. That is called implementation. How, how do they implement? or life saving rules. People put life saving rules. So, if you violate it, it is very, very big consequence to his employment, life saving. For, ruling, for saving the lives, this is how they implement. So, health and safety employees and the line managers together, they, they do the implementation. And third is act. That is, final, third is check. How do you check? You should have observations, you should have checking the uh, conformances, checking the procedures, checking the knowledge of the people, checking the energy of the leadership, checking the energy of the people. All those things you have to check in the third step. And finally, you have to act. If there is any gaps in the checking, in the in the checking itself, whole uh, data analytics, data collection, you have to collect the whole data here and analyze here. Data collection, which is called a descriptive analytics. Finally, it is implemented in the review, which is called prediction and prescriptive analytics. That is that has come in the act 
check and act stage. So act is finally uh, reviewing. How do you review? At what level you have to review what? At different levels you have to review. When I talk about take a case study, then you'll understand all these things. So how do you review? Only for uh, for compliance purpose, if you review, the safety management will not improve. We have, we have to review for improving the system. PDCA has to be finally come to continuous improvement. <clears throat> the VOSHAS 18001, these are the clauses. If you open the, so you have first scope, references, or OHS policy, planning, hazard, legal, legal and other things, objectives, all these things which we have, we have talked. Resources, competence training, communication, how do you communicate, documentation, control of document, operation controls. These are the specification. Your OHS should contain all these things based on PDCA. So, what are the challenges? Originally published as a specification, it is converted into standard. It will not, it will not state the performance levels. So, you will have a lot of benefit. The, the specification will not talk about the what levels of performance is to be there. It all depends on how you implement. So, provides flexible management, complete, it is a voluntary thing. This is internationally recognized. This can be aligned with aligned with ISO 9, 14001, 9001. Now, in 2018, ISO has made specification, ISO 45001. It takes care of OSHA's requirement, OSHA's 18001. It takes care of ILO's requirement, ILO's guidelines, and it is compatible with OSHA's ISO 14001, ISO 9001. It is based on OSHA's 18001. So, ISO standard will be, so lot of ISO standards are there. This is also converted into ISO standard in the March of 2018. Must be uh, slowly organizations will be moving to implement it. It is not OSHA's 18001 or ISO 45001 is not depending upon the size, type of activities and industries. It is applicable to all the sizes, all the type of industries, whether it is integrated steel plant which produces 10 million ton plant or it is a watch factory or it is a uh, service industry like TCS or a supply chain industry. Everywhere it is, it is applicable. ISO 45001 also did not talk about the specific criteria. Okay. But it will enable organization to build OHS, Occupational Health and System Management. So, that is why the OHS managements keep changing from organization to organization depending upon their agility, energy, resources and management commitment. Though people say we have got see OSHA's 18,001 certificate, it does not mean that you have got very good OHS management. The ISO 45001 they don't, don't talk about product safety, property damage. 
So, it is systematically whole world will switch over to ISO 9, 000, 45001. Thank you. What did we discuss? We discussed for doing any work, for making any product, you require a specification that will make the making the product easy, buying the product easy. Similarly, to address hazard, risk and risk control system putting, how to put it? What level we have to put it? How systematically we have to put it? We require a specification. So, WOSHAS 18001 is the specification for Occupational Health and Safety Management System. OSHAS 18001 in 99, it started as a specification. When specification matures, it will become a standard. In 2007, it has become standard. Much more uh, internationalization has happened with ISO 45001 has come, taking care of all of the OSHAS 18001, ILO, ILO also has got its own management system. So, it takes care of everything, brought one ISO 45001, which could be which in line with ISO 9001, ISO 14001. So, next class we will discuss, next session we will discuss one case study, how you can implement occupational health and safety management system based on the specification OSHAS 18001, 2007. Thank you.